we are thrilled to have with us uh, Max Bernheimer. If you're from Boston, you know that name. His father for years with a glorious store uh, in Cambridge that people used to fall into with antiquities. He's with Christie's International Head of Antiquities. Great to have you here. Thanks, Tom. What's the number one thing we get wrong when we think about King Tut, Liz Taylor, Richard Burton, Egypt, all these stereotypes simple guys like me have. What's the thing that drives you nuts when you, as an expert in antiquities, look at Egypt? Well, for me, it's um, every inquiry that comes in, it's somebody will say, oh, I have X that my grandfather got out of King Tut's tomb. Well, of course, that's not <laughs> possible. So if, if every object that supposedly came out of King Tut's tomb was uh, was actually out there and authentically... It filled up the Nile yeah, River. It's a bit silly. Uh, the not silly is the footage we have over here of the damage from the museum. Just remarkable. You have been there, built in 1902, I believe, a gorgeous building. Their pride of nation, if you will. What was your reaction when you saw the damage? Well, it's horrible and it's completely senseless because anything that's in that museum is so well documented that it would be virtually unsaleable. My biggest fear is that the people are looking for gold, something that can be melted down and therefore not traceable. 24 pounds. King Tut's mask. I remember the sensation. I did not go see it. I can't remember why, but 24.5 pounds, solid gold, the mask. If we right. say that's the iconic modern point that we know, when you think of that mask in that museum, what does it signal to you? Well, it just shows that even a minor king had access a to... minor king? He was a minor king. I mean, an important dynasty, but, uh, you know, he's not like his grandfather, Amenhotep III, who, who ruled for for numerous years and conquered territories. Tut was, was basically uh, a boy. He was trying to rehabilitate the traditional Egyptian religions which his father had, had mm -hmm. abandoned. Uh, and he only ruled for a short time. But think of the wealth that was buried with him even though he was a minor king. Uh, James Galvin just on with his book, The Modern Middle East. I think of Albert Harani's uh, epic, 800 pages or whatever. How Egyptian are the present Egyptians when you look back at your world of ancient Egypt? What is the lineage forward, the linkage forward? That's a great question that I don't really have a good answer for, but probably the the Coptic people, you know, the people who are still uh, adhering to the Christian faith are the closest to antiquity. There's this, that's the most common thread. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your, your work at Christie's. Sure. And you sent me over some of the things there. The Old Kingdom Dynasty 5. Is it Conifer? Conifer, yeah. Yeah, Conifer. Right. I mean, I think of you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. or there it is. It's up here right now. You can see it on the screen, folks. 2.8 million. That came in a little above uh, your estimate, did it? That's right. It was a wonderful piece, great condition, and great provenance going back to the 19th century. That's a key point, the provenance. And um, it sold to a, a museum uh, in the U.S. It sold to a museum. Can you say who? I could. It's uh, it's in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas yeah. Museum. Yeah. Fine. Everybody wants to own a little bit of Egypt. Oh, who, how do you know it's not stolen? How do you know it's provenance where you can have confidence Egypt won't dial 1-800-Christie's and say, wait a minute, I believe it came from our desert. Right. Well, this piece had been uh, in a previous auction in the 1980s, and it had been uh, in an English collection and published as such. So those are the key points to look for. Is something published? Is, is there a record of it? And the key date um, for the art market is 1983, because that's the most recent year that Egypt's own antiquities law came into effect. Here's another one, red granite, an Egyptian red granite statue of a queen for three quarters of a million dollars. I mean, to me, it's beautiful. What is distinctive about this versus uh, the run of the mill? Well, this one depicts a queen, and it's probably Cleopatra the Seventh, the famous Cleopatra of. It you looks know, like Liz uh, Taylor. A little bit, and and she. Um, this piece is is the very last ruler of the Ptolemaic dynasty, just before mm -hmm. the Romans took over. Um, very cool. It's it's very distinctively of that period. I don't know if that helps you. But. No, it helps me a lot. I just, I just, it, you go through the Ptolemaic dynasty and then the Romans came in. What happened when the Romans came in? They got, you know, they showed up one day at the shore, right? Well, uh, it was the famous battle of Actium that uh, Augustus, the future Augustus, then Octavian, defeated Cleopatra and Mark Antony, and then he went to Egypt. And basically, he, he continued to rule Egypt as Pharaoh, and, and um, the Romans just continued the traditions. You have a wonderful mixture of things in Egypt at that mm. time, sort of 
purely Egyptian combined with, with uh, the Roman. For our, our, our viewers worldwide, uh, where, where should we go to study Egypt? Do we go to the British Museum? Do we go to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo? Is it just so exceptionally superior that's the one to go to? Is it your Boston MFA when you were at Clark University and your father's work at Harvard? Or is it in New York? It's Boston, well, in this country, it's Boston, the Metropolitan Museum, and the Brooklyn Museum. Those are the three major places, the three best collections. In Europe, it would be, as you say, um, London at the British Museum, Paris, the Louvre, um, and then, of course, Cairo. Well, well, of course, Cairo, when you go in there, like the mummies, I guess they were damaged somewhat. I, I, I mean, to be honest, you can just put the head back on the mummy, right? Am I... Is that my naive I, here? I read Zahi Hawass's blog, and it seems that the pieces that were damaged can be restored. So it doesn't seem to be a, a catastrophic mm -hmm. uh, problem. Uh, to collectors that want to get in here that don't have $890,500 like this Egyptian uh, bronze uh, here, uh, how do you get into this cheaply? Somebody wants to get this at home and get the real thing? Well, the key to buying on the art market is to buy from reputable sources. And, and there is a whole range. I mean, the vast majority of objects is probably under a few thousand dollars. And there are dealers uh, in New York and in Europe that one could go to. But whenever you're buying, please ask the question, what is the provenance? I mean, that's the key thing. Absolutely. How far back do you have to go in provenance? The I mean, minimum requirement would be 1983. Uh, that surprises me. Why so recent is 1983? Well, that's the year of Egypt's antiquities law. But, but with hope, one could trace things back even further. As I said, with the Khan mm -hmm. statue that we spoke about before, that was going back to the 19th century. So that was, you know, as good as it gets, really, provenance-wise. Uh, I want to look at this one last item here from Christie's, a large Egyptian bronze falcon-headed, how do you say that, Horus? Horus, right. Horus. Yeah. Um, I, I, I look at this as Egypt. I look at the stereotype of, you know, Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, this kind of mythology, if you will. If I was to go to Egypt, what's the one thing I have to see, like the soul of this beautiful piece you have here? Well, the Egyptian Museum, obviously the pyramids at Giza, and then you would go south to Luxor and see the, the temples there. And, and, and speaking of that, is there more stuff out there? Is, are you optimistic that if you could take all the archaeological work you could do, that there's more Still things in the to ground. Discover, still in the ground. I would say absolutely. There's there's a large percentage of things still in the ground. They're making discoveries all the time. Very good. Thank you, Max Bernheimer. This has been great from Christie's. Uh, you can see this out at YouTube, Bloomberg.com, uh, Bloomberg on YouTube rather. You can see this wonderful interview, Max Bernheimer, with us from Kistries. And as we go out, here's the Cairo Museum, Egyptian uh, museum that Max was talking about. 1902. It's surveillance midday. Great.